Aloha everyone! In today's video, I'm going to be talking about the ipu and the ipu heke. So if you want to hear about these things, stay tuned. Aloha everyone! It's Lynn with I Hula Hawaii, bringing the hula of Hawaii to you. I wanted to talk about some of the Hawaiian implements that we use in our hula. Now, if you have been following along with me, dancing to some of the warm-ups that we have done, or even had any knowledge of hula, you have heard the sound of the ipu. Let me tell you a little bit about the ipu. Now, we use the ipu as a drum-like fashion. Now, although it is not a drum, it is considered a percussion instrument. That is why we call it an implement. There are different patterns to play the ipu, so let's go ahead and start with the basics of the ipu. Now let me tell you a little bit about the basics of an ipu. It is a gourd that has been dried, it has been cut off the top, and inside has been cleaned out of its veins and seeds. Okay? It also has been varnished, some of them are not varnished, but let's go ahead and talk about the different parts of the ipu. The ipu does have a neck, now notice this one does have a hole, but that was drilled in for our handle, but the handle is not on this one right now. Okay. It also has a base. On the base here you find its pico, its belly button. The way that we play this ipu is on its base. We do not play this one on the side. When you play your ipu, this is where the sound is coming out. So you don't ever want to turn your ipu upside down for two reasons. Number one, the sound would go down, but also we do not want that dust particles to come out. So you don't ever turn your ipu upside down and pat it to clean it out around others. You want to do that um, in a separate area so that you don't get it in your eyes and in your nose. So we do want to play our ipu in somewhat of a slight angle like this, and we're going to play it here on the base. Now to play your ipu, you are going to use the hand that you write with. So this is going to be your pa'i hand, your hitting hand. The other hand you will use to hold the neck of the ipu. Now the part of your hand that you're going to use is the base palm of your hand as well as your fingertips. And we have two sounds. We have a u sound and an upper sound which is a te. And when you hit the ipu with these parts of your hand, you will hear two different sounds. You will hear a low sound for the u and a higher sound for the te. Now let's just practice together with just our regular hands. So if you put your hands like this, let's pat the base of our palms together. Everyone say u. The top fingertips together is te. U te te. Now together it sounds like this. U te u te te. U te u te te. Now notice that my hands are doing more of a round motion rather than a flat hitting motion or even this type of motion. So just like when we use our hula hands in hula, when we're using our wrists, we're gonna do that same method in playing our ute, ute, te. We really wanna focus on that wrist and making sure that we hit the ipu with these two points of our hands. Otherwise, if you overextend your hand like this, you might really um, bring a lot of pain as you bruise your fingers easily. So you are gonna have to get a little bit of a firm fingertip hit there, okay? So now let's go ahead and practice on our ipu. So as I mentioned before, you want to hold the neck of your ipu in the hand that you do not write with, and then you want to use your pa'i hand or your hitting hand, the hand that you use to write with, okay? So going back to the base, here you see the pico. We're gonna be hitting the bottom and the top of the ipu. This is gonna be our u point. This is gonna be our te point. It's gonna sound like this. See if you can say u te, u te te with me. U te, u te te, u te, u te te. See if you can hear the low and high sounds of the u te, u te te. Notice I'm just using my wrist. I'm not moving my ipu at all. Just continuing with the same beat pattern. Now there are many other types of beats. We can just do a single u te u te, such as this. And then there are more rhythmical beat patterns to learn as well. 
Now let me go ahead and talk about what to look for if you were to purchase an EPU. Now I've been using this EPU as my demonstration EPU, but actually this EPU is a bit small for me to use. Now when you go to purchase an EPU, you want to take a look at its neck and make sure that you can actually put your hand and fingers around the EPU. You also want to take the span of your hand underneath and it should not be your hand should not be bigger than the ipu. So as you can see, this ipu is too small for me, but I also like to play it because it's nice and light. And since I'm teaching hula uh, most of the day, I just use this smaller one just out of personal preference. But if I were to dance with this ipu, I would use one of my larger ones. Another thing that you wanna look for on your ipu is any kind of special markings. Now remember, this used to be a, a gourd. And so this has a nice character. You see this um, shape right here in the front? And that differentiates my ipu from somebody else's ipu. So you wanna kinda look for something that is unique about your ipu. Or we don't wanna, this is not considered dirty or bruised or anything like that. This is the character of this ipu. There's also some character here on top. And again, this one has been varnished. Now, this hole here had um, a handle, a string handle, and normally we put our hand through the string, which I'll show you with a different ipu. But this ipu happened, the, I play it so much, the string just broke and I've, I haven't ever replaced it. So if you're wondering what that hole is, they don't come with holes um, like this. We've drilled it just to put a handle. Now let me go ahead and show you two other sizes of ipus. Now you did hear this ipu sound. Let's go ahead and see what the other two sound like. This is more of a medium size ipu. Uh, you're also going to hear a lower tone when I play this. Notice that this ipu is darker in color. It also has its own character um, markings as well. And the neck of this ipu is slightly um, skinnier than the other one. So we have a larger base and a skinnier neck, which makes it easy for me to play. Now this one does have its cording on it, and I'm gonna show you how to put this on, okay? So I'm gonna switch sides here. Now what you want to do is, remember the rules about not turning the ipu upside down for that dust particles to not come out. So you wanna go ahead and put your hand through the, the cording like this, and to make it tighter so that it stays on your wrist, you just wanna twist your wrist like this, okay? So I am, playing this with my right hand. I'm not playing it backwards for you so that you can see how I play the ipu with the cording bracelet. See if you can hear the deeper sound of this ipu. So again, I'm just hitting it on the base, turning it this way so that you can see. I wish my screen was a little bigger so that you could kind of see the whole thing. Um, but this ipu is also very special to me as well. Um, you might have noticed some markings on the bottom that actually have come off. My late kumu had uh, gifted this to me. And so this is a ipu that I keep on the side for very special occasions to dance with. It is not my everyday ipu. Um, so you can have more than one ipu. I actually have about six or seven. Let's go ahead and take a look at a larger ipu. Now this is the largest ipu that I own. This is one that we made together in our halal when my kumu was alive. We actually ordered them from overseas. We sawed off the top. We cleaned all of the dried um, insides with just like a wire coat hanger. We also drilled our holes in the side to put our handle on. We had to clean this all off from the mud. And notice that this one is not varnished. So this is a very natural look of the ipu. And you can also see all of the different characteristics of this ipu. There's also even small dents inside, which make it very unique. Now you notice the neck of this ipu is quite large. It's quite large for me to put my hand around. So I don't use it um, necessarily to dance with. But the reason why I chose this ipu was first for its characteristics, but the sound of this ipu is very different from my others. So again, let me switch sides so I can show you again. So I have a short cord on this one, so I do not need to twist my arm. I'm gonna play this for you, see if you can hear the deep sound of this ipu. Let me back up a little bit so you can get it here. So I have 
different sounds with different ipus. This ipu has a larger base and a bigger mouth coming out the top. Those are my three ipu. Now let me go ahead and show you what an ipu heke is. This is the ipu heke. It is a double gourd. It has one gourd on top that has been turned upside down. The bottom has been cut out. The neck has been taken off and it has been attached to another gourd that has a regular base. It also has a cording here. Now the way that we play this ipu heke is we usually pound it down on a soft mat or a base so that it doesn't crack and we hit the sides. We never actually hit the top heke here and this is where we play the ipu heke. This is the biggest ipu heke that I have. This was passed down to me um, by a cousin who no longer dances hula. So that's another thing is your hula implements never get thrown away. They never get old. You could use them as a child as well as an adult. They, um, unless they break, you do not need to replace them. So if you don't use them anymore, <clears throat> so if you don't use them anymore, please pass them on to somebody that would appreciate them. So this ipu heke has a braided cotton cord so that you can hold it, okay? Um, actually here, you can kind of see where the two ipu have been connected. So they have cut off the neck of this ipu, attached it here, they have made a hole in the bottom, and here is the base of the other ipu. So this ipu heke is two in one. Now this also has a very rich and deep sound. Again, you would play it on the base, and on the sides, holding it together. Now the last thing that I want to tell you about the ipu is which types of hula you dance one with. With the modern hula, we usually dance with the regular ipu. With kahiko or the ancient hula, we use the ipu heke. Again, hula dancers will use the ipu in their dances for awana. In kahiko, the hula dancers will use this to chant with and play within their hula. Mahalo for tuning in today with me. I hope that you have enjoyed learning a little bit about the ipu or maybe getting a refresher for those of you that do have one. So I'm curious to know, do you own a ipu? Have you ever played one? Could you go ahead and leave me a comment below because I'm super curious to know what is happening on the other side of this video screen. If you could share my channel with someone, give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed this video, and please subscribe if you haven't already. If you'd like to dance to some of the sounds of this ipu, go ahead and click on any one of those hula basic videos and you could hear the beautiful sounds of the ipu and hula as well. Until we see each other again, ahui ho and aloha.